everyone, let's take a look at number 17. So it says a marketing company wants to estimate the proportion of consumers in a certain region of the country who would react favorably to a new marketing campaign. All right, so the first thing I can see is the word proportion. So I, I'm going to take note of that. It says further, the company wants the estimate. Okay, and again, I'm seeing the word estimate. I actually should have clued into that before. As, as soon as I see estimate the proportion, I can already tell we want a confidence interval because we're trying to estimate a parameter. All right, so I'm gonna be in prop land, which means I'm gonna have a Z star critical value. Okay, um, further, the company wants to estimate the, the, wants the estimate to have a margin of error of no more than 5% with 90% confidence. Of the following, which is the closest to the minimum number of consumers needed to obtain this estimate with the desired precision? Okay, so this is solve for sample size, right? Because they're saying here, what's the minimum number of consumers? So how many people does this marketing company need to include in its sample so that they have a 5% margin of error at 90% confidence? Well, we have an inequality for that, right? We know that N has to be greater than or equal, and here's the, the inequality, N, uh, P prime, 1 minus p prime times your z star critical value. I'm just going to put z squared. There's too many superscripts there. So z squared over your margin of error squared. So let's start to fill these in. Now, if I have, let's go one at a time. Let me get my different highlighter color. 90% uh, confidence means z is going to be 1.645, right? I know 5% margin of error, so I'm going to put 0.05 down here. Now, in terms of p prime, we were not given any sample proportion, so what we default to in stats is we say, ooh, gosh, what was that? Let me pinch this back. I must have hit something. P prime is going to default to 50%. This gives us what we call a conservative estimate, meaning it'll give us probably, not probably, it'll give us a larger sample size than we might have needed, but it, it keeps us on the safe side. So we're playing it safe, playing it conservatively. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, I'm going to say n has to be greater than or equal to, this is going to be 0.5, 1 minus 0.5. All right, my z was 1.645. I'm going to square that. And my margin of error was 5%. I'm going to square that. And I'm just going to crunch this on my calculator and see what I get. So let me head to my, I'm going to my app. So we had what, 0.5 times 1 minus 0.5, I need to multiply that by 1.645 squared, and then I need to divide that by 0.05 squared, and let's see what we get. It looks like about 270.603. So let me write, this is going to be equal to 270.603. Now, ultimately, n needs to be greater than or equal to this number, which, since n has to be a whole number, is going to tell us n has to be uh, greater than or equal, well, that looks like a terrible greater than or equal to symbol. N has to be greater than or equal to 271, meaning I need at least 271 consumers. That is the minimum number I need. If I go any higher than that, that's fine. It costs me more time and money, but I'll and but my margin of error would go down. That's that's the trade off, right? More time, more money, but more precise. But I need at least 271 to get five percent. A 5% margin of error with 90% confidence. All right, thanks.